I'm Derek. And I'm Noah, and you're listening to A Bite Up, where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. Ooh, and sometimes we swing into a review across a spider verse. Yeah, webs. Um, Thank you for that contribution. And, um, <laughs> yeah, sticky hands. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Other spider things. <laughs> Sen- our senses are tingling. That was a good one. You got there. That one made sense. It did. The yeah. only one. Because <laughs> he technically doesn't have sticky fingers. What does he have? He manipulates the atoms around whatever he's on to stay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, what? Yeah. I mean, that yeah. is what it he's is. Got little, he's, got, he's got little spiders, uh, spider hairs on his fingers. No, that's just Sam Raimi. He made it weird. Well, that's true. <laughs> he had three tries and it got weirder as time went on. <laughs> like, weirder or just completely batshit? I mean, dance sequence. Okay, so into the spider. <laughs> no, not into the spider verse. We're going. <laughs> into We've been into it. The review of Spider Man across go. the spider verse. I, I mean, you're probably thinking, what could we possibly say that everybody else didn't say? Well, they weren't us, and also, we love it. (laughs) So, I mean, this is really just going to be a celebration of this franchise so far. I'd say it's like a separate franchise from the Spider-Man franchise. It's its own thing. It's the Miles Morales universe, baby. I mean, he did say he's going to do his own thing, and they're doing their own thing. They surely are. (laughs) So before we get into the Spider-Verse, make sure you're following us on all those social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We have a Discord, all that great stuff. We got a Patreon, dollar a month. Get you some great bonus things. Go check that out. We have a um, new series coming out this month called Before the MCU. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> so we're talking about all the movies prior to the giant staple that the MCU is. So Fantastic Four, X Men, Howard the Duck, Blade, all of those wonderful movies. I can't wait to relive some of those. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to the absurdity already. <laughs> and then last but not least, make sure you subscribe and review. Throw some stars our way. It makes us very happy. Five, preferably. No, no lo- more and no less. <laughs> Just five. Just five. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Mm. Balancing web slinging and family drama is no easy feat for our teenage heroes, Gwen and Miles. Both are finding it difficult protecting their cities and keeping it a secret from their families. Gwen has a run-in at the Guggenheim with a renaissance vulture and is introduced to anomaly fighting Spider-Man 2099 and motorcycle riding Jessica Drew. She swings back (laughs) into Miles' world where he has just had a battle with his, quote, nemesis? The spot. Miles travels outside of his universe thinking he's going to help Gwen only to put a target on his back. Wow. That's like only the first like 30 minutes of the movie. (laughs) When I was so it took me mm, like three days to write these four sentences because it was like, how do it deep do I go? Do I mention the 800 spider people that are introduced? You could. All right. Here we go. No. No. (laughs) Good God. Stop. (laughs) All right, so spoiler alert, officially, spoiler alert, the sirens are going across the universes. Do not go ahead if you have not seen this movie. I agree. I just want to say, usually when we give our spoiler alerts, it's kind of just like, you know, we're doing the service of giving a spoiler alert. I really do feel like if you have not seen this, you do not want to be spoiled no. on this. Like, I don't care if you're like Derek and you don't care about spoilers. This is one of those movies where, like, even if you don't care to know what happens in it you have to experience it so go see it agreed and then listen to us and nobody no i'm just kidding you can listen to whoever (laughs) no (laughs) other piece of media ever all right all right let us officially take a bite of spider-man across the spider of us oh my god you're like yelling at me so excited i'm so excited (laughs) I'm so excited. I have to say that when we left the theaters from seeing this, I actually had nothing to say because in the words of Lady Gaga, I was speechless. It, Yeah, I mean, this is, it had so much to live up to, right? Into the Spider-Verse was not only 
such an amazing introduction to this beloved comic book character that so many readers have fallen in love with. But they just transcended what it means and what a comic book movie or any movie could possibly be with animation. Yeah. I mean, they just put it further and you can see all the influences it's had throughout media, it, even if it being Miss Marvel. We saw some of the stuff that they've incorporated from that. Everything Everywhere All at Once incorporated some of the same feels using different medias. So it's just one of those that just set the bar. So the second one had a lot, a lot to live up to. And I mean, just going off of general feelings, how we felt, I think that's the correct thing. Speechless. Mm -hmm. It's I just it's a lot of movie. It's a lot of stuff. But what it is, is phenomenal. It's it's been hard for me to wrap my mind around how to even talk about some of these elements in our discord we have a little across the spider-verse uh spoiler thread going get it thread. and spider thread uh-huh. uh and <laughs> i like people were talking about theories and thoughts and i'm like i can't even get to that point yet because mm. i'm still just like i'm just like i don't know trying to really take it all in i almost feel like i want to see it again this is one of those movies where you almost have to see it again because there is a lot, right? It's not even just story wise, but action sequences and then the hundreds of spider people. I felt like I was focusing on like three of them as they were going through the, you know, New Wave in New York. And just I'm like, I, I, I can't fathom how many spider people are on this thing right now. <laughs> I need a Marvel card collection of only all the spider people that were introduced in this movie. Wouldn't that be Ooh, fire? That would be cool. I have to say that. A funny experience I had was that I was at physical therapy yesterday, uh, and part of my physical therapy is that I get trigger point injections. Anyway, I'm face down on the table, and the uh, the nurse is there, and she's like, did you see Sp- Across the Spider-Verse? Any Interesting. Chance? Yeah, and my face is like in the donut hole, and she's like putting lidocaine in my back, and she's like, it was amazing. Yeah. She's like, and I didn't even see the first one. I'm watching the first one with my boyfriend this weekend, and I think I want to watch the second one again. <laughs> He was like, so someone who really had no like ties to it was like, I was completely blown away by this movie. I mean, that's the cool thing about this, right? Is that even if you're not super familiar with Spider-Man in general or even Miles Morales, it's amazing to look at and to experience. So regardless, if you're not really following the story or care, why, why would you do that? But it's just gorgeous. I mean, I think we're going to say that constantly throughout this review but it's just amazing and i love hearing that type of thing so many people that i wouldn't expect to watch this have mentioned that they've seen it and it's like oh this is great it's for everybody and i think beyond the animation it hits so many different types of emotional beats i mean i'm sitting in the theater i'm literally loling i'm gasping at some of the things i'm being amazed by the animation it You know, it pulls at your heartstrings. It had everything in it. Yeah. Yeah. The can we talk about our theater experience for like two seconds? Oh, my gosh. The worst theater experience on earth. And it's not about the volume. Right. Okay, so that did happen in our theater. I know that going around, a lot of people have been saying like it was kind of low, like it was hard to hear. And that was the case for us for the first up until like the end of the vulture fight, which was kind of disappointing. Like we could not understand what they were saying, like. The action sequences that should be loud. We were like, are we just not able to hear right now? It was a very bizarre imbalance between the background music and like the voice acting. Yeah. So when in these action scenes, when there was like fun music, the music was blasting and they were talking in little whispers. It or was, like reverse. It was very odd. It was odd. Yeah. The mixing. There's something weird. I know that. What was it? Last week they said that they're sending out a new mix like sound mix of the movie so hopefully if you're going to see it for the first time hopefully that doesn't happen yeah i hope so but all they had to do in our theater they just raised the volume a little bit i guess and it was fine Mm -hmm. so i'm glad they did that but there were still moments in the movie where i was like i can't really understand what you're saying Um, but yeah unfortunately it happened towards the end again yeah yeah but our theater experience right so we went to a local theater because this movie has been sold out everywhere because we have full-time jobs and we work in libraries it's very busy time with some reading and everything so we couldn't really see it right away we went to a local theater right and we were gonna check it out we're like fine it's a 
you know, Thursday night, it should be fine, 7 p.m. I can't explain to you how much I just wanted children to just leave the theater. These parents drop their kids off at the theater and let them go ham. (laughs) It was the worst experience. But saying that, this movie is amazing. Like, them did not ruin the movie for me. You know what I mean? Like, if the movie was, like, okay and that was happening, it would have ruined the entire experience for me. But regardless of that, I was like, this movie's amazing. I just had my 38th birthday, and I (laughs) never felt like such an old man. I'm sitting there. First of all, no one I sit all the way in the back like old people do. And I am like going like, I can't hear it. What are they saying? What's happening? And then these damn kids won't stop making noise. They won't put their freaking phones away. Like, I've never felt like such an old person. And in my mind, I'm like, it's quarantine's fault. Yeah. They don't know how to sit still anymore. That's They're true. addicted to their phones. <laughs> but like seriously, like even like the sort of well-behaved tweenagers that were there or teens, they were still on their phones the whole time. Yeah. They were snapping selfies the entire time. I was like, what is happening? Theater etiquette just doesn't exist anymore. This is a friendly ABO PSA. Yeah, more movies. letters. We just just if you don't want to watch the movie, don't go. Don't yeah. force your kids to go. Like just Shh, don't put TikTok on in the movie. I think that that dad was sitting in like Transformers or something like that. He Probably. wanted to go see a different movie. Take the kids to that. It's robots in disguise. Beast Wars, baby. Kids friendly. Uh, anyway. Primal. All right. Anyway, so that was our theater experience. <laughs> but with that being said, we were so happy. So good. So good. <laughs> the story of the first one was so good and it felt intimate. With even though like a lot of spider people from different universes coming in, this one did a really good job of balancing those intimate moments when they needed to be. And those like really emotional climaxes with like insane. This is just so massive and big. They went they up this to like 11, Mm. not even just like two notches up. They just went insane with the amount that this movie could be. And it does make me worry for the last one. but. Two out of two being clear winners, I do have faith in the last one. I think that they need to make a Universal Studios ride or a Disney ride out of this second one. Oh, my God. Right? Like sort of like a Back to the Future ride where you're, I don't even know what you're doing, sitting on something, but flying through all the universes. They do. Where is it? Is it Universal? I think it used to be Universal where they had a Spider-Man ride where you were like in a car and like all his villains would be attacking oh, your car. Sure. They could easily just update that like yeah. they've been doing to the Disney rides to this one. <laughs> I think they should. Oh my gosh, there's so many different worlds to go through. It would be so much fun. But I agree, like it feels like another level. Uh, and it's it's not very often that the second in a series is better than the first. Mm. And this one completely. I mean, if we're doing a bell curve here, I hope we're not going down in the last one. I hope it's more of a line chart going through the roof for the third one. Yeah, because the first one, like there's no like incline, right? Mm -hmm. It started at 100 Mm -hmm. with the first one. And this one just like kind of raised it a little bit. And it's like that third one just needs to like blast it off the chart. In in the first one, what did we meet? Let's say we met like five other spider beings. Beings, right. Right. This one, they're like, OK, well, let's multiply that by 20 yeah. in, or, or like 20 or 100. We'll give you thousands of spider beings. Yeah. It's like, OK, I guess we got to do a million in the next one <laughs> because it's like that's what made it so exciting was that it was just, you know, it, it was eye candy the entire time. And it was very much like a Where's Waldo sort of thing where there's this giant crowd and you're looking to see who these different figures are. It's like I couldn't get enough of it. Yeah, this they did a really good job of mixing all of that stuff together. The beginning I really liked because we got to go to Gwen, right? Mm. And then the first one, we know Gwen-ish through Miles. And this one, I felt like they know that Miles is the main character, but Gwen is like a hard second. Like she is like the second lead character in this. Seeing her world and seeing her backstory was just makes it that more important of that character. But I just can't get over that story right it's it's one of those moments in this movie that stands out to me not only how it looked but just the emotional punch that that movie did and it kind of like cemented that other thing of spider-man right 
what it means to live that double life, trying to have it all and think that you can do it all and what those sacrifices mean. I just I, I thought it was beautiful. The vulture fight being introduced to Miguel and Jess in that way, I thought was interesting to be introduced through Gwen. But it made sense with like the overall theme of the movie being like, all my friends are invited to this mm. and I'm not. I'm left out and I don't know why. Ugh, it was just really good. I, I agree. I, I was a little I was actually surprised that we started with Gwen, but mm. I was really happy that we got to live there with her and kind of see what she's been going through in the moment, getting her backstory. You know, what I also love about this movie and sort of this piece of the franchise is that we have our Afro Latinx main lead in Miles Morales, but then we also have our co lead here in a female hero, right? And seeing what she's going through, and it's and it's not really I don't know when we think about the MCU. I mean, we're lucky now that we have Kamala Khan, we've had She Hulk, but it took us a really long time to give us those female led properties. So to sort of see her sharing the spotlight in this one made me really happy and deserved. I yeah. mean, it just makes sense for the story. They're like just such. The way they wrote these two characters together, yeah, they like kind of like each other in a, like a romantic way, but that platonic relationship that's there that kind of made that foundation is really strong, and I appreciate those moments. But they did have some struggles in this movie, which I thought were, it has to happen, you know, for emotional turmoil and to move the story along. Like, it can't be all sunshine and roses, I guess, but... I liked those moments just as much as the good moments because it showed their fluidity with writing those characters. And they are, they're, they're, I wouldn't, I don't know, I'm trying to think, they're not necessarily mirrors of each other, but they're on a parallel path, right? I mean, most of the spider people you could argue are. Well, that's true. But I think that they share something in the sense that they're young, younger than a lot of the other spider people. So they're dealing with other social pressures on top of that. Uh, and then kind of Gwen's storyline of keeping, the secret from her father, her father finding out and having to abandon that life. But now she has to keep a secret from her other trusted right. confidant, right. who's Miles. So she's super conflicted in this because she's trying to find her place in the world. But in order to do that, she has to sort of betray Miles in that way. Yeah. And she lost her Peter Parker, her best friend. Right. So she's kind of alienating her against the people that she should go to and trust. And then also keeping things from the one person you should be able to tell. Yeah. And, and in dealing with her loss, she has to almost have another loss. So she's just all sorts of trapped. Right. She's 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 in a web of her own making. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew something upon <laughs> was coming. <laughs> I mean, that's just a beautiful metaphor, actually. <laughs> so. <laughs> but I did. I loved that they added to those themes of the first one. Right. So the first one is really much about like, I believe Rio uh, Miles's mom had said something about, you know, whenever you go out there, you're going to be people might not like you. You might not fit in whatever you come home and you're with your home and you fit in and we love you and you're accepted no matter what. And they amplified that so much more, not only with like his home life, but showing that his school is struggling a little bit. Like, how can he go to this counselor's meeting to see where his future is going to go? If he has to fight the villain of the week or stop people from robbing a shoe store or, I don't know, fighting a roly poly guy on the train tracks, like <laughs> how can he do all of those things? And it seems like he's not able to really balance it that well. Like he's gotten better as Spider-Man. He's figuring out his powers. And I think he's a very, what's the right word, competent mm. in his abilities. But with his family life and living that double life, I still think he has a lot to learn because what he's like 15 now. It's been like 18 months since the first one, so he's a little older. He has a lot to learn, but I liked those themes. It's that thing with Spider-Man, right? It's the thing that makes Spider-Man who he is, trying to live the double life and also trying to have it all and believe that you can do it all. Yeah, OG Peter Parker didn't have school and college to have to worry about. You know, when you have a full-time job that just happens to let you be on the scene when there might be a crime to snap some photos... Yeah. He has it a little easier than convenient. <laughs> yeah. Than than poor Miles. And I think that Miles is doing the best that he can. You know, a lot of this is balancing what he wants to be, who he is now, who he is to his family, and trying to live up to them because he loves his family. He loves his parents and he wants to do right by them. But 
he also like has a world to save. So that's a lot to kind of take on as a, a 15, 16 year old. And he just saved the universe. So it's like, how much more? Very do, true. Do I have to go? I'm to- trying to go to Princeton. And his mom is like, not New Jersey. And he's like, oh, but wait, someone's trying to destroy the world. Yeah. And she's like, not New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> I love I loved how every time they said not New Jersey, they were like, but, you know, all respect to people from New Jersey. It's fair, right? <laughs> it's like you can't trash your neighbor that much, even though not New Jersey. I also wonder what folks living in New Jersey think when that is being said in the movie. Most of our friends live there. So if you're listening, what did you think? Let us know. <laughs> even though you're from New York, what do you think? Right. <laughs> they they are the Miles Morales of the situation. <laughs> yeah. But the, that theme is really much throughout this thing. And I don't think we're going to get necessarily full closure until the third one. You know, he did really in the climax with Miguel on the train. He did come into his own like, I don't care what everybody says about me. I'm going to do my own thing because i am my own person i can choose what i'm gonna do not this predetermined bullshit that you're gonna tell me but before we get like super into the weeds with the characters and all the other stuff towards the end of the movie we got to talk about spot because how they were one able to make this character like seem like a villain of the week then turn him completely terrifying is phenomenal And then also halfway through this movie, I was like, how the spot has not been in this that much. What is going to happen? Oh, yeah, there's a third part coming. This is like part one of two of the finale. And by the end of it, it's like there's so much happening. I don't know how they're going to wrap this up. But spot, I loved this dude so much. I thought his introduction was really funny. Him trying to get money because he doesn't have work anymore because of his abilities. But did you like notice his animation? Like when it got close up to him, it was like kind of sketches. Like, you know, there were circles where the shoulders would be and then like the head. So it's like the skeleton of the sketch. Mm. And then it's like fully formed. What I did not appreciate was that his body kind of looked like E.T. when it was like drained of all life. (laughs) And it kind of scared me because I'm not a fan of E.T. He it co- terrifies he, me. He sort of reminded <laughs> me of the the Heartless from Kingdom Hearts. Mm. You know, like he was sort of like shapeless, but, right. you know, he was like a void. I the, the character was interesting, right? Because he does start sort of laughable mm-hmm. when you're when I was watching the movie. I'm thinking, oh, this is our first villain that Miles is going to take care of and then he'll be gone. You know, it's like our intro, you know, our, our first battle before the big battle. But the yeah, the balance of all of the storylines and the plots in this, I mean, and it gets even more complicated at the end, but it was like he kind of spot drove the actions of it. But then it became about something else. But in the background, spot still doing all his evil deeds. Well, what's interesting about the character is that they they really thought it through. Right. It's like so we saw spot in the first one when Miles hit him in the head with the bagel. But it turns out he worked there. And when the collider exploded it gave him his power so his powers came from miles and that's what he loved to say right we're arch emesis because we created each other and that's is typically how arch enemies do form it's like they create each other or whatever but what's really cool is that like he's an anomaly he can go to any of the universes within like the spider verse but he's like gearing up to be the final villain but it is it's right it's all in the background but because of him the spider society comes in and then that's how miles gets there. So it's this weird, like ebb and flow mm. with both of these characters, even though at one point he just disappears. Yeah. He's like, by the way, I'm, I'm probably going to kill your dad. Bye. Yeah. And- he's just like <laughs> transporting himself through himself and then he's gone. And then the spider people are all spider society. People are all fighting each other, but then he's still being bad somewhere. Yeah. It's like you forgot about the bad guy, everybody. It, it's really cool. I like that. They, leaned into that aspect of the character in the comics because he is very much like his powers are terrifying right he can he has wormholes he can do a lot of that stuff like what we saw in the movie but they always treat him as like not really serious he's kind of dorky yeah and always like a pawn to some bigger villains exactly and he's been in so many people's comics fantastic four spider-man daredevil all of these things but it's like 
they're really cementing him into like the spider canon. And I like it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, reading in doing research and reading his profile, he really is just tools for other villains. They're using him for his powers. And then they end up usually killing him in some way. <laughs> yeah. It's like they just throw him away. So seeing him sort of, you know, trying to convince Miles that, no, 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 I am I'm your nemesis. It's it's me. I'm the I'm the guy. And Miles being like, okay, whatever, dude. It's so going along with the backstory of this character mm. in Marvel. Um, I do love the poetry of Miles hitting him with a bagel, which is so famous for having a hole in it for him only to be changed into Spot, who is full of wormholes. That is pretty good. I saw a fan art of Spot and everything everywhere all at once. Like, oh, they're like, of course. <laughs> it's like bagels, multiverse. <laughs> it just happens. <laughs> it is the only food that makes sense in the multiverse. <laughs> All universes have bagels in them and they never lead to any good. No, just other universes. Yeah. It's like when you eat a, a giant bagel for breakfast and then you're so tired for the rest of the day. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> but like speaking of like the multiverseness, right? We got to visit so many different spider people's New York's almost. And also like the spider society. The innovation going behind these worlds and the spider verse or the spider society you know how they're like walking on the ceiling but if you're like looking at it from their view it looks like a normal sidewalk like just thinking about like how these people would get around or hang out it's just i mean it's mind-blowing it's it does really close attention to detail that make this franchise as good as it is because no nothing is like on accident it's all no. very purposeful yes. I kept looking at Gwen's ponytail. That's what let me know whether they were upside down or right side up. Because it's just like it sticking always, straight yeah, up. <laughs> it was always straight up. I was like, okay, they're upside down right now. Okay, yeah. now they're regular. Okay. So I was that was always my thing. But yeah, everything in this was a specific choice. Nothing was done just for fun. Hmm. I don't think. Everything, all the animation styles, how people were stylized, it was all done with such intention. And I think that's what made it so fantastic. Yeah, it it was a lot like they the the first one was like the same style, right? It's like added some comic book elements, but the same animation pretty much through and through this one. When Gwen is in her world, she herself looks different. Everything around her is different. I love that her world whenever she was there was like a mood ring. Mm. So like whatever she was experiencing, that's how the world changed mm. and the lighting and like even her colors, everything would change around that. Like if she's sad or if it's an emotional moment, everything's turning blue and dark. Whenever she's getting everything out or angry or fighting, it's like red and vibrant. It was beautiful. It was like a watercolor mood ring. Yeah, I was, I kept thinking it's watercolor. It's almost like pastels, like chalk. Like they were like, even in those tender moments with her father, they, they were soft, right? <sighs> the two of them there, they didn't have hard lines. They mm. were just sort of, existing in this ethereal moment of understanding each other oh, when they hugged yeah and then, like the the warmth kind of spread from them i was like oh, that's so nice it was so beautiful you know one of the one of my favorite parts is i love a movie when they give you a short little backstory of themselves you know she starts with hey i'm gwen this is what's going on with me yeah. even miles did that he's like hey let's catch up to speed i'm miles morales quite a few of them did it yeah and i yeah. appreciated that i oh gosh i'm getting sidetracked but i loved when we would meet a new spider society person and their comic book cover would come amazing onto the screen. Oh my gosh, it was so good. But <laughs> when Miles is introducing himself, he's sort of, he's flying through the city, but he's flying into his sketchbook. And then sometimes he's a sketch and sometimes he's on post-its. And uh, yeah. I, I just, I'm so curious about the creative process of deciding when one style is happening versus another. Yeah. It's incredible. I mean, there's a reason that we got this five years after the uh, first one yeah it's because they were meticulously plotting out not only the story and the characters but the art styles throughout yeah there was something that you know phil lord is one of the big people that worked on this and they worked on the first one as well and you know so many of the animators if you're on twitter just look up like spider-verse or like across the spider-verse or whatever you'll see a lot of the artists that worked on this like explaining why this was the way it was which is amazing to see it's super cool but like he said something. These are made up numbers, but it's the gist of what he said. Of what I'm going to say. Say there was like 16 animation styles in the first one. This one was like 214. Like wow. they just like upped it because it wasn't only the different characters worlds, but how these characters presented themselves. You know, 
Hobie, Spider-Punk, was completely different. I was just going to bring him up. Than most of them, and even their frame rates were different. Mm -hmm. Like most animation, their frame rates, like you change the movement every two frames. But like Hobie, it was like every three. But then his like guitar was like every four. So it was just like this weird thing to see. Not weird, but like my brain almost couldn't process these different types of like frame rates and animations happening side by side. It was just like, what? I, I'm focusing on your guitar. I should be listening to what you're saying. But like, I, <laughs> I, I feel like we saw this like in a tiny, tiny scale in Wreck-It Ralph. Mm. You know, when they're traveling and like all the different video game characters are there right. and they all have their own ways of movement. But they all felt like they were on the same page, let's say. Whereas this movie felt like a collage. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was like cutting out Hobie from his world and putting it into Nueva York. Right. So I felt like. Th that the difference in that even like someone like spider bite who like would kind of appear and disappear and she, disappear and appear she looked like code lyoko yeah almost like you remember the old show yes <laughs> it was like that animation style but like fluid but sometimes like kind of like glitchy it was mm -hmm. oh, it's so good <laughs> and then of course going to moon moon Batten oh my god and meeting indian spider-man oh pav pav that was so much fun that was Okay, let's talk. Let, let's talk about like our favorite moments, right? Like, or our favorite world, we should say. I really, really like Gwen's, but I think Spider India was my favorite, like, little vignette of mm -hmm. the whole movie. Like, the person, the spider person we're meeting, what happens in there, and just like the emotional but also fun stuff that happened. But it's the moment where like the building is falling, and you have these spider people working in complete complete unison and like that scene you're like okay they saved the building it stopped they saved everybody it just kept happening mm -hmm. they get to the bridge the captain's about to die it's like that little part like that world completely shows like the beginning to end of like what spider-man is he's saving people constantly trying his hardest to do the right thing and then even when he's not supposed to save the captain right Miles is like, I can do it. Like, let me do it. I'll do it. And he did do it. It's just, I couldn't, like, that was my favorite part. The whole thing was just like, this is, this makes me so happy as a Spider-Man fan. I think what that whole sequence really painted for me was how attached that spider being is to that world. I felt like Moonbatten really encompassed the same energy that Pav had. Mm, right, right? right like he is he's that from world. that world he's right. from that world and right. you can see how well they match it i think we talked a little bit about that with gwen you know in her world but you could really see it in this his sort of bright poppy frenetic energy that he had uh as pav just really exploded in that world and that was everywhere his you know and of course his beautiful hair that just naturally grows out of his head that way <laughs> i love the way that he moved i love the bangle the dude needs to be humbled just a little bit because he's too perfect. <laughs> I mean, and you know, I think he's still riding high, right? So he is, I think he only got his power six months ago. And he's phenomenal. Well, with he's phenomenal, but he's, he's, the serious thing hasn't happened in his spider story yet where he loses someone close to him. Right. So right. he's, he's still riding that wave of like, I've got powers. I'm awesome. Look how strong I am. But also like, he is the one that I'm like, this is like a Clark Kent Superman situation because like, you can tell his beautiful <laughs> hair, like, who that is yeah like, come on guys <laughs> no he he cannot put that under a cap no, he's everyone like, needs to see that hair absolutely not I'm yeah not. <laughs> i but this whole scene the energy of it the sort of stakes that are here because mm. again so if if our storyline of spot and of miles and the spider society they're they're two different wavelengths right but every so often they cross each other and this is one of those scenes where it crosses each other right so we see Miles going to another universe. He's glitching out. And at the same time, Spot is trying to get to the lab in order to make himself the feed on the energy that gives him his power. Yeah, he wants yeah. to be the warm holiest he's ever been <laughs> in his existence. So we see that. And then it as it converges is when it comes to that very Spider-Man moment of we need to save all these people because the city is crumbling around. Them. And you have to make a choice. Absolutely. It's always about that choice. You're never going to be able to do everything at once. And that's like, I loved that weird, not weird. I keep saying weird, but that, that typical 
canon event, right? They use this in the thing. The whole purpose of the Spider Society and what Miguel O'Hara decided to do was there are certain events that happen in a spider person's life that have to happen. Because, like, what he did is he changed those events and the world went. So, preserving those things, the captain dying, their Gwen or whatever, their love interest dying, those particular things have to happen. It was cool to put Spot kind of in the middle of that as like this anomaly creating thing. And then also the twist of it being Miles himself is an anomaly. But then the meta conversation of like, is canon really the thing that needs to be like completely preserved? Because can it be changed? Like you're one person telling me it has to be this way, but it doesn't have to be this way, the, right? I mean, <laughs> the, the Spider-Man universe is just one giant philosophical problem, right? So it's the trolley problem of mm-hmm. saving the one versus saving the many. It's the thought of do we have free will or is everything predetermined for us? Mm-hmm. And so. That is the question, right? So, yeah, Miguel, you did this thing that you, quote, weren't supposed to do. But actually, was that the thing that you were supposed to do? But now, you know what I mean? So it's hard to tell with the stuff that happened with in Mumbai. Is that how you say it? It's Mumbai and Manhattan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I keep wanting to say Mumbai, but I'm like, no, put Batten at the end of it. <laughs> but it's hard to tell if, like, it's true, right? Because Spot was there. Miles changed Bob's canon event, but Spot kind of created that spot or the anomaly or the universe destroying thing. And then when all the spider people came to like preserve it. So it's like, okay, is that would that have happened if Spot wasn't there? Right. So. So you figure Miles himself is an anomaly. That anomaly caused Spot to exist. Spite became, Spot became an anomaly in another world, causing the canon event. Miguel, I think you're wrong. <laughs> there, I said it. But like, this is like, I love this conversation because this is the types of conversation that like comic book readers are constantly always having, right? It's like, no, the character was created this way. It can't happen this way. But then you get a different creative team coming in and being like, I'm just going to change all that. <laughs> right. But then it's like, what does that mean? For the choices of that one that created everything that you're still using. So it's, it's a fun conversation to have of canon in general, right? If like, no, a series has to follow these strict rules that were made up in the first place. But is he telling the truth, I think, is the biggest question. The truth. Interesting. Is it, but is he, what is his, like, does he believe he's right and he thinks that he's doing the right thing? Or does he know he's wrong and he's doing something? You know, yeah, like, let's let's get into Miguel. Let's get okay. into Spider-Man 2099. Well, I love Pav. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love Pav. I want to go back there. I want to see more of him. Um, yeah, he's fantastic. <laughs> he's just the best. Oscar uh, Isaac. <laughs> oh, so here we have Oscar <laughs> Isaac, uh, you know, the world's daddy's BFF. I mean, even in Spider-Person, <laughs> I was like, they drew they drew him. <laughs> <laughs> oh he said they drew him oh cool. well did you have you seen all the pictures of like <laughs> i don't mean to sexualize this character but like they're like they really drew a butt on this dude let's sexualize a male character yeah. let's do it i'm down <laughs> he's so many people have like took the like, half screenshots of the character where he's like you know it's it shows his butt and it's like yeah the dude it's like he has cake <laughs> They're like, you had America's ass over in the yeah. MCU. Well, this is the spider versus ass right here. Baby. And then on top of that, you have Oscar Isaac and everybody's just like falling head over heels. And I'm like, guys, this, this guy's not he's bad news bears. Like, <laughs> Well, exactly. He's bad news bears. And I think, you know, is there a piece of this character that is so distraught about what he did to himself and his family who he it was wasn't, an anomaly in. Okay, right. It wasn't it, even his family. It wasn't his family. And like the fact that he just openly told all of these people, like, yeah, like that Miguel died. So I was like, oh, let I me, stepped in. Let me take his body away and just step in for his family. And it's like, that is a level of ick. Like, I get it because it's like he's so distraught from losing his stuff or whatever, and you'll do anything to get whatever back. 
and they were so close to what he had. I'm just like, oh, that's so nasty. Well, it's so nasty. And I believe that his motivations are coming from a place of hurt, hurt in the in the sense of I didn't get what I wanted. So now all of the people you're close to have to die. Right. So you can feel what I felt. Right. You know, just because it happened to him, I don't think it means that it's going to happen for everybody or it could. I just don't like what are the other examples of that really happening? Right. Yeah. I think that both metaphorically and literally he is full of venom (laughs) and he just needs to bite because he's so distraught. He's constantly in a state of what he thinks is protection, but it almost feels like he's lashing out. Yeah, I I thought. His characterization was really good. I heard that Oscar Isaac said he would do the character if they didn't make him boring. And I'm like, he's not boring. No. Not at all. He's great. He's intimidating when he needs to be. He's off-putting and brooding. I love his webs, the way they look. I love that he has fangs and that he can bite you with poison like a spider can. It's just chef's kiss on like, I would say he's an antagonist for Miles, but I wouldn't classify him as a villain yet. I agree. I don't think he has done the ultimate villain act just yet. Just destroy the universe. But yeah, we have a we have a third movie to get to where he (laughs) may flash those colors. But I think that there is some piece of him that people can trust. I mean, he has an entire spider society that follow his orders. He got Gwen. He has Jessica Drew. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest that she seems to be. So have somewhat more of a moral compass than he does, Mm. but they still are working together on this. You know, the more you think about it, it's like, right, the the main driving force behind the spider society is to preserve the canons and to eradicate anomalies and put them back in their proper timelines. Every one of these spider people probably went through some type of canon event and they're all broken people. They're all hurt. They're all missing a part of them. Maybe they're all like Gwen, where when she did leave her world, she has nobody. What's the point of being there? My dad doesn't. My dad's going to arrest me, even though he knows I wouldn't have killed my best friend. You got it wrong. So what did Jessica Drew go through? What did some of the other people, you know, so it's like he's kind of collecting these like very broken people and they're all like, yeah, like we don't want this to happen to other people. So we're going to make sure their closest people die. Like, it's so it's such an interesting problem to think about. Like, oh, no, to save everybody, we have to let this these people die or these spider people to go through this. And it's like, oh, but who's to say that there's still not going to be heroes, even if that person doesn't die? I think that's the thing. Right. And right. I think like ultimately we're going to find out because hopefully Miles is going to be able to save his dad from spot because we got that vision of what's going to happen or what spot's going to do. Hopefully when he does save his dad, the universe doesn't go. So like, let's hope Miguel fingers is cro- wrong. Fingers yeah. crossed. I just, I love, have you seen online? So the canon event, right? It's like who died to create the Spider-Man or to make, you know, it's that event. <laughs> like the spider cat, the T-Rex Spider-Man. And everybody's like, what were their canon events? Like what? Mama asteroid. <laughs> it was the asteroid. <laughs> Asteroid killed his his uncle Ben. <laughs> yes, the spider cat is actually Garfield, Odie, John Arbuckle, gone. R.I.P. Rip, rip. There's, there's also the Spider Man popsicle from like the old ice cream trucks. He's in this movie. He's very small, so good. But it's like, did his ice cream man die? And oh, that's why. I- <laughs> that's sad. That that's even more sad than John Arbuckle. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's like. I feel like we can make an entire episode just on this thing, right? It's like, what is it? Theories mean? of the Spider-Verse. Right. And it's like, what does this all mean? It's like, there's theories of like, you know, Earth 42 spider went to Miles. It wasn't supposed to bite him and it did, creating an anomaly for him. But like, so that changed Earth 42's world. But then what does that mean that now Miles is back in that world? It's just so like, it's a big web of mystery. And and conspiracies. I'm clapping clapping for that. (laughs) One person's backstory who I hope they get into in the third film is Jessica Drew. Mm. I feel like we really don't know much about her. She alluded to loss, but she didn't say any specifics. Right. She's pregnant. Yeah. She has an amazing motorcycle. I want to know more about her. Yeah. And I love that she shoots web out of her fingertips. Mm. It's like, oh, that's extra strength. You got five webs at once instead of just one. (laughs) 
Yeah, I do want more of her because there's moments where it, it seems like she's wavering a bit. Mm. But ultimately, in the end, when Gwen creates her team or makes her band, she's not part of that. Yet. But it is nice to yet it is nice to see some of the newer ones are with her, like Spider Bite, and it's like okay, cool. Like she did and get Pav a new is there team. Too. Pav is there too. Pav is there, of course. And then our original ones: we got Penny, Spider Ham, Spider Noir. Ugh. Peter B. Parker. Peter B. Parker. Yeah. Mayday. And Mayday. Yeah. Mayday. Mayday, guys. Ugh. Mayday has chutzpah. Mayday is ready for the fight. She doesn't care that she's a baby. No, and I love that he was like, I shouldn't have made her that web shooter. Like, I love he gave her a web shooter. He <laughs> just like, trusts her completely. He's like, this kid's cool. I want to ride with this one. <laughs> she's so cute. She's cool. Mayday eventually becomes Spider Girl. Right? Yeah. The, the character. Yeah. See, this is the canon, right? Right. This is the conversation. It's like, I don't know. This one could. Couldn't. It could be whatever spider person it wants to be, I guess. That's true. Either way, I love it. <laughs> I love the addition of, of Mayday. <laughs> so we've spoken about so many of Spider Society members. Who is your favorite? Oh, out of all of, the, all of them that we've seen, I'm going to go based off of the ones that we get a lot of screen time with because like the two seconds that I saw of Bombastic Bagman I I loved it. Like that's what I needed in like a Spider Verse type thing. <laughs> I even have his action figure right next to me. <laughs> but okay, I think my favorite one, aside from Gwen, would have to be <gasps> Miguel. I just what? Yeah, I just that is such a Noah answer. I I like I like him a lot. I think there's so much more with him. And I just he's like my aesthetic, right? It's like that creepy horror mixed with like the superhero thing uh i loved it and i loved that just the, the scene with the vulture and him i don't know he's just great i want more of him and i like his complicated backstory and he's like that morally gray mm. that's kind of where i'm at he's doing what he believes is right but is it for the right reasons yeah and we'll see and i'll love him either way Why'd you have to go and make things so complicated, <laughs> Avril Lavigne? <laughs> you know, I'm really, I am so distraught when I try and figure out who my, like, my favorite one is. I think they mm. all have aspects that I love. I mean, like. I think it's fair to say, like, everybody is everybody's favorite, yeah. right? It's like, you can't hate any of them. I mean, let's talk about Hobie for just a second, Ugh. right? Like, our, you're, you're, you're stalling for time, but. I'm a, totally our fine. spider punk. I mean, he <laughs> is totally himself. He is able to look at a situation and say, wait, that's actually wrong. I'm going to go help this person. You know, he's like he's on the moral high ground. At well, the he's the, the anarchist, right? Yeah. He's like the perfect person to go against the spider society when he sees that it does not align with what he believes. Right. And he was right. He ended up making that extra bracelet for Gwen that helped her out in the end. I love that character so much. Like the. The way they did him, because that is how he is, right, in the comics. He's the anarchist. He's UK Spider-Man. He's like a zine. He's right. like a moving zine. Oh, that's, that's actually a good way to describe his animation style, too. Exactly. It's just like a collage of hodgepodge. Right. Like. <laughs> Every time you turn the page, he could be a color. He could be a sketch. Yeah. He could be black and white. I just, I love Daniel Kalula's, like, so thick accent for yes. this character, where it's like, I don't know what you're saying, but I love everything oh yeah and they were having fun with this they're giving him rhyming cockney slang throughout (laughs) like they were just like bring him to the top of that you know 60s 70s punk oh yeah like you know british punk i love and to just quote miles it's like how are you even cooler with your mask off 100 percent. like that hobie is just so cool he's another one i want to live in his world a little bit imagine going into his universe no that would be fire. I think it would it would give me a headache. I'd love it. <laughs> I want to visit. I'll get a day pass. <laughs> there you go. Get your little one day MetroCard fun pass. Dude. Yeah. Oh, RIP fun pass. I love Hobie. He's yeah. a close second for me for my favorite. I one. love Hobie. I, I mean, I'm really, oh gosh, this is like so Derek, isn't it? I'm really leaning towards Pav as my favorite. I knew it. I, I, fe- I felt like you were going to say Gwen, but I knew you would say Pav somewhere. Yeah, because I need the poppy firecracker. You know, he's what I mean? positive. I he's, think. Yeah, exactly. I think we both picked characters that are very much like us in a similar way. Mm. Like, you know, Oscar Isaac. I'm going to call him Oscar Isaac. <laughs> is 
the attitude is a lot similar to my attitude and then pause is yours. It's like that balance. We balance each other out. We really do. We we truly are a yin to each other's yang. I would never, full disclaimer, I would never take another universe as me place to like be with their family. That's just gross. And I will never grow hair like that. <laughs> like pops. Because I can't. <laughs> R.I.P. my hair. <laughs> Roll Aww. the in memoriam right now. Spider bald. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk about representation. Not one bald spider. Hey, they had masks. You never know. <laughs> true, true, true. Okay, 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 okay. We've talked about so much in this movie, and I know... We're spider gay. Sorry. The, Sorry. Hey, technically, so Sun Spider, who's in it with the, the, one, the, the one with the crutches and the wheelchair and stuff, they are queer. Oh, thank. Okay, so, good. So just saying, and I love that they were in it. Um, Pri- happy Pride. <laughs> yeah. Happy Prime Month. Happy Prime Month. <laughs> <laughs> More gay spiders. Hashtag Pride. <laughs> Hashtag Pride spiders. Spider Pride. Sprite. <laughs> Hashtag Sprite. Spider Man. Ooh, Spider Man. Spider Man. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we talked about so much in this movie, and I know we missed so much in this movie. The little scenes. Please comment below. Go on our Discord into the Spider Thread and. Tell us what your favorite moments were or call us out for ones that we didn't mention that you love, whatever. But we have to talk about the end. The end, the cliffhanger is cruel and I don't appreciate it, but it made for a great movie experience. (laughs) This movie is like two and a half hours long. Didn't feel like it. By the end of it, you're like, how? Oh, they're not going to end it. There's a second. No way. They couldn't. We have. The complete twist, and I love it when movies do this, right? You have Gwen going to get Miles. Oh, girl. Miles is going to his mother to tell her, finally, I'm Spider-Man. The scene in that movie where you know something is off is the way that Rio with Miles is acting of kind of like, what are you talking about? Your hair's different. It's weird. And then noticing that Rio is outside of the room, not in the room where Miles is with Gwen, we found it. He's in his Spider's universe? And not 42. His... Oh, my God. I can't believe they did this. They did the old bait and switch because here we are thinking we're like, oh, my gosh, Gwen's rights out outside of his window. Is she going to stop him from admitting to his mother that he's Spider-Man? She's going to jump in at just the right moment. What is it going to mean? And then they weren't even in the same universe. They weren't. And it's it's a perfect way to end this type of movie to make you wait and sit to figure out what is going to happen in the next one yeah when uncle aaron came in we're like what is happening why is uncle aaron alive that's that's so messed up for this character right it's like he lost his uncle like that is the thing great power great responsibility that's the thing that like catapults spider-man into being who he is the greatest that he can be and for him to be back and miles to see all this stuff and then not only to see his uncle, but to see his uncle is still just as bad in this universe. And himself, Miles G. Morales, surprise, is Prowler <laughs> and completely menacing. I mean, like, yikes. <laughs> so I'm scared. I mean, we leave our hero, our Miles, no G. Morales, tied up. <laughs> that he still has a G, but they don't, but they don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> he's tied up he's face to face with himself as the like antithesis of himself mm. and that's where we're left yeah his his father died in that universe there is no spider-man in that universe because the spider that was supposed to bite him bit miles and i love have you seen so in the first movie when miles gets his power and he meets with his universe of spider-man and their spider senses are going off miles's spider sense that it shows is green and purple, mm-hmm. like Prowler's. Mm. Spider-Man's is green and red, or not green, blue and red. And then it goes back to Miles and it changes to red and blue. So his path and fate changed. Wow. Because our Miles could have easily followed in his uncle's footsteps because he looked up to him and everything. So it makes sense that that universe is Miles because it didn't have what it should have. Father died. He is now Prowler. Right. Yeah. And he's, he, his suit is even the same like his original suit. He spray painted the Prowler symbol. Oh, my God. It's just the parallels are so cool. I just thought of like 10 things that we forgot to talk about. But, but one of them is, is that I'm hoping that Miles's new powers help him get out of this situation. Right. Uh, yeah. So 
taking he, of the energy. He can take the energy. He can also go invisible. So I'm hoping that he's going to kind of just pop himself out of these ropes immediately. And then Man, Prowler's scary, though. I don't know. I don't know how he's going to get out of that, right? Like, they put him literally in a precarious situation. Yes. And then, <laughs> and then also, just quick, quick caveat. We also had, I loved, okay, another thing I loved was when we saw like real life humans in this movie. Oh my God. We had the Donnell Glover Prowler. Donald Glover. Donald Glover <laughs> in there. I, it was a Robert, Roger Rabbit situation. Yes, right? exactly. He's and Bob it, Hoskins. <laughs> I love that they were able to put him in the movie because he is such like a huge Spider-Man fan. He's like kind of the reason why like a lot of this stuff is happening. He is the voice for Miles Morales, essentially. And I love that we got that tease in um, in Homecoming with Spider-Man. And now he's like fully Prowler, but he's caught. So it's like, is he going to team up with like Michael Keaton's Vulture at some point? What does this mean? What does it mean? It's probably just a fun gag, but it's really cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it was so fun. But sorry, sorry to digress. Segway. Segway. I, you know, we have, we see Gwen with her new band. Mm. they're ready to take it on so now oh my gosh so let's see going into the third installment of this right we have spot still running madness well he's like fully like he's mega inverted spot. colors right so he's black with white spirals yeah now he's, he's mega spot doing what he showed miles that he was gonna do he's gonna right be sucking everything up sucking him up yeah going after his dad we have miles in earth 42 with miles g morales as prowler and no way to get back no, no way home, no. some might say. <laughs> and, and we also have Miguel yeah. still with the rest of the Spider Society trying to track them down while Gwen is putting together her own mini band of spiders. There is so many moving parts. Unfortunately, Ben Riley was like decommissioned and <laughs> Spider Gwen took his bracelet, put him in there, which I love the addition of Ben Riley. It's just so broody and amazing. Yes. Um I just I I hope that Jessica Drew at some point changes because she is a very like morally fixated character. She's a good character. And I hope that she sees they're doing something wrong. But Miguel is terrifying. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how possibly all of these webs can converge and how Miles gets out of it. He will. I have faith that he will. But I think. I believe he will make it out of it, but I think that we are going to have quite a few casualties no. in the next one. As long as all of the spider people on Gwen's side are fine, I'm okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Miguel, so even though he's my favorite spider person, this he can go. Like, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm worried about Miles' father. Yeah. Personally. Me too. Yikes. Yeah. Yikes indeed. Yeah. Okay. Lego <laughs> Spider-Man. Oh my gosh. That's... Oh my guys, like I mean, there's so, again, there's so much. Like we found out that a 14 year old, after he would do his homework, he animated the Lego Spider Man part oh in this. Gosh. Like this whole thing, I think it was Phil Lord that said in an interview, like people were asking, like, what is your goal for like doing this? And he's like, as long as people feel like anybody can be Spider Man, we did it right. T. And I just, I feel like they keep doing it right. It's like we get so many different Spider people. We're seeing why Spider Man. This could be controversial with people. He is the greatest superhero of all time. It's showing that. It's showing why. Why he has this, these legs for so many years. Eight and legs. Eight, sometimes he does. <laughs> See? <laughs> There's even a spider person that is made up entirely of spiders. And it's terrifying. Cuckoo creepy. Yeah, I don't like it. Mm. It's scary. But I just, I mean, uh, Great. Okay, we have to rate this movie, right? Oh. Because that's what a review does. This is the hardest rating we've had to do. I give it a full, tiny, itty-bitty five out of five. I just... There's no way. Like, Same. There's no way that it could be lower than that. Five webs. There's a... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> five legs. Five legs. <laughs> five Spider Society members. It's It's so good. I mean... I'm very excited for the third one. I don't have any doubts that they're not going to knock it out of the park like these ones. Phenomenal. Phenomenal job. Yes. Let us let us live in this moment of excitement, knowing that there is a third installment, not mourning the end of it just yet. Third and final. No. Nah. But Amy Pascal, producer, company, everything like that, did say that a Spider-Gwen spinoff Ooh. is in the works and a live action Miles Morales. That's exciting. So 
Yay! Yeah, so this will be the end of this little storyline, but I think it'll only keep growing. Which is perfect, right? It's like a lot of the very acclaimed stories that are like the perfect thing, Breaking Bad, all those things that are, they told a story that they want to tell and they ended on their terms. They're like, this is the story. We told it. We're good. Somebody else do it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) If you want. Right. Very excited. Let's know what you thought. Talk to us. Tell us your favorite spider person. Can't wait. Comment below. You'll hear us talking about Spider-Man later on Patreon. And then whenever the next Spider-Verse movie comes out. (laughs) There's a lot more Spider-Man, Spider-People in the future. Uh, All right. Goodbye. Bye. (laughs) Thanks for listening to A Bite Of. Artwork and editing by our own Noah. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at A Bite Of Pod. And on Facebook at a bite of. If you have any questions, recommendations, or just want to say hi, you can contact us on abiteofpod.com. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to spread the word. See you next time on A Bite of. Bye!